Hey there, practitioners. There are three major reasons why a urinary or salivary adrenal cortisol test has no place in a functional medicine or clinical nutritional practice. Now, in this video, I'll be talking about one of those ways, which is the cortisol awakening response and how accurate it actually is. So there are, at least as far as I'm concerned, three reasons why the adrenal salivary or urinary testing is inaccurate. Uh, we're going to talk today about the accuracy of the adrenal cortisol awakening response, but we're also going to talk about in a future video about the diurnal rhythm and the day is a cortisol variation. Now, if you don't know what the cortisol awakening response is, it quite simply is this bump in cortisol that we get 15 to 30 minutes after waking up. It's thought to sort of prime the system, get ready for the day, uh, and then it starts to go back down into its normal diurnal rhythm. Now, it may be responsible, be how somebody slept or what time they woke up or whether they woke up to an alarm clock or not, but Basically, it's this bump in cortisol. And there's a normal healthy level. It can be too high or too low. However, we're going to take a quick look at this. Now, notice here that this is a this is from a paper that looks at working days. Now, there's two groups of people here. And this one group has a really high cortisol awakening response. And this group here has a uh, more blunted uh, cortisol awakening response, both on a working day. Now, what you're about to see is you're going to see the same group of people, but on a leisure or non-working day. And there's a couple things to pay attention to here. Number one is on a working day versus a leisure day, there's a significant difference in this particular group, which by the way, the dashed line is the non-nightmare group. This solid line is the nightmare group. And you can see that people with nightmares have a significantly blunted uh, cortisol awakening response on working days, as well as leisure days, although it's a little bit less because if somebody's working or not working, they tend to have a higher or lower cortisol awakening response. Now, the first part of this is, who are you evaluating? Do they have nightmares or not? Did they have a nightmare the night before or not? Were they working or was it a non-working day? All of these things go into somebody's cortisol awakening response. And the problem is we're making determinations on what we should do from a therapeutic or nutritional or interventional level based on this single test, but we're not done. According to this paper, the reason why this is a problem is because gathering data on one day rather than multiple days has implications for the reliability of measurement of the cortisol measures. We, one day is not accurate, but yet that's what most people are doing. And as you can see here, there's a whole bunch of reasons that can impact the cortisol response from lifestyle to demographics to whether somebody has a condition or not. But that's not all. The time of awakening, sleep duration, sleep quality, ambient light levels, season, weekday versus weekend, prior day experiences, anticipation of something that's coming. But that's not all. Also, according to the literature, previous day stressors, same day stressors, nightmares, positive versus negative affect, mood or emotions, being alone or with other people, interactions with other people, self-reports of physical well-being, joint pain, severity, and believe it or not, whether or not one's spouse is stressed out can all impact cortisol levels on a daily or state basis. These all impact cortisol results. But if that's not enough, there's a couple of really cool case reports here. This one used a 27-year-old guy, and over the course of 50 days, every three days took salivary cortisol. Now, he did four measurements. Awakening, 15 minute, 30 minute, and 45 minute to get the cortisol awakening response. Now, you have to look at this. Over the course of 50 days, every three days, this is a measured in, and the cortisol was measured in uh, nanomoles per liter. You can see the minimum, his awakening sample was 1.45. The highest was 11. 15 minutes later, his lowest was 5. His upper was 27. 30 minutes uh, it was about 9, up to 48. This is, you guys, 9 to 48. Uh, 45 minutes was 9 to about 34. Now, here's my question. What day were you testing him? Was it this day? And he has a really high cortisol awakening response. Was it this day? And this isn't even one day. This is just minimum and max over the course of 50 days. Here's the thing. A single measurement cortisol awakening response is not accurate. As you can see here in one person over 50 days, there was gross differences in how separate these or divergent these uh, numbers were. You can see here the high versus the low was kind of obscene. And lastly, is it didn't even necessarily matter when he woke up. Down here, you can see he woke up early and his cortisol was a little bit lower. But over here, he woke up just about as early and his cortisol was higher. And if you were to pause this video and take a look at this, it, it's all over the place. A single salivary cord or urinary cortisol awakening response is just simply not accurate. But that's not all. This paper took 15 people and they put them in a sleep laboratory for two days to try to control their environment as much as they could. Yet, even in a controlled environment, Researchers said the awakening cortisol level and the magnitude of increase show daily variations, even in a controlled environment, and are potentially sensitive to differences in daily activities. Why the heck are we doing this once? Practitioners are looking for trait-like cortisol 
levels in people. Are you generally high, generally low, or normal cortisol? The problem is, if you only do one test, you're getting a state-like characteristic for them. According to the same paper, how can we get a better, accurate, more accurate result? Well, according to this, cross-sectional studies suggest that it may be necessary to collect up to six consecutive days of samples to assess the cortisol awakening response as a single day collection biases the cortisol awakening response to state rather than trait characteristics. How many practitioners are running it six days in a row? So the accuracy of the salivary or urinary cortisol awakening response, big fat zero on that. But that's just how I read the evidence. I'd love to hear what you think. And when you're done with that, head over to Clinician's Code, where we have these kind of conversations and a lot more while we help practitioners build confidence, cut overwhelm, and become more successful in functional medicine.